Kasarani is among the 17 constituencies of Nairobi County and one of the most densely populated urban residential areas. It is a host to thousands of small businesses and one would be forgiven to imagine that farming would be one of them. But one businessman, Andrew Gishimo Kioi, known by many of the residents here as Wa Kioi, has taken entrepreneurship to another level. In less than a quarter acre of land, Wakio has set up a local bar and other small businesses including a dairy and pig farm. Yes, right here along the bustling streets of Kasarani. On today's show though, we will be focusing on his dairy business. Having been inspired by his dad, Wakio started humbly eight years ago with only three cows and no intention of turning the venture into a business. With the, with the cows, I started about about eight years ago. I started with about three three of them, and uh, that time I didn't. I never used to do zero grazing, as you can see. There is some 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 area where they used to graze, so I never used to do uh, zero grazing. But with time, I was I, I came to learn that there's a lot of uh, benefits when it comes to zero grazing because. You avoid a lot of things, especially like diseases and all these kind of things. So that's when I decided to, to do them zero grazing. And now from that time, I think now I should be having about, uh, about 10, 10, uh, 10 uh, cows, of which eight are milking and uh, two of them, and there are about four heifers. So in total, I'm having about 14, 15 cows. Like any other business venture, Wakio realized that if he was to make any profits, he needed to do a thorough research on dairy farming. He realized that zero grazing, though intensive, was the only way he could counter some of the challenges he was facing during the business's infancy. You do quite a, a lot of reading and also uh, inquiries from the officers, from the vet uh, officers who, are, who normally attend to my cows. And at the end of the day, you get the benefits of the, you get to know the benefits of the of the, of the zero grazing because when it is freelance, you, you normally encounter. In fact, the reason, one of the reasons why I decided to go on zero grazing, it is because of the diseases. There, you, you know, like there is this East Coast fever. It is normally it's normally brought about by the ticks. It, it, it used to be quite prevalent, and uh, you find that you are spending a lot of money on. Uh, medication like uh, the, the vet is always uh, you're always in consultation with the vet and uh, we, with those challenges you come to realize that uh, and uh, you also do, do a, a reading about the, the, the farming and uh, the vets also well, with the consultation of the of the veterinary officers I, I, they, they, I saw the benefit of the zero grazing and it's quite you, you minimize the diseases quite quite heavily. Real estate is the most common business that businessmen venture into around Nairobi and its environs. There has been an upsurge of high-rise apartments for rental due to demand and the ever-growing population occasioned by rural urban migration. For Wakio, this is a future endeavor maybe he would like to get into. For now, dairy and pig farming are what are in his mind at the moment. Okay, yeah, we are, we are, we are doing that. Eh? And uh, in the in the course of time, we we, are, we just have to change. We we are we are thinking of uh, another program for the area, but for the time being, uh, since we have not put up those highlights, this is also uh, a quite a good source of income. And if you do it quite uh, intensively, you find like where I've uh, contained them is just about less than a quarter an acre, is it? Isn't it? It's actually less than quarter an acre. It's about two plots. If you find actually putting up a building like uh, this uh, high rise, it's good eh? because uh, unajua unaanza kupata rent. Like in, okay, this one is more intensive, eh? but you'll find it's also bringing in quite, quite. Uh, it's not like it's idle. It's bringing in quite a, quite a good income because you'll find you're able to employ a few, a few guys. You're also able to, to meet your own daily, da daily needs. Dairy farming is quite a tedious and engaging venture that requires a lot of attention. Dairy cows, especially the Frisian breeds, are very sensitive. To help him, Wakio has employed a few farmhands to run the day-to-day -day activities at the farm. He narrates to us on some of the daily activities at the dairy farm. 
we, 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 we normally milk from around uh, 4.30, from around 4 in the morning. That is the time for milking. Then from there, after milking, we now normally do the cleaning. Some people go for the cleaning of the sheds and others are now feeding the, the cows. So we, the, after, after milking, we do the cleaning of the sheds. After the cleaning of the sheds, we now go to the, 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 the feeding of the cows. Once we feed them, that is around, from around, uh, from around eight o'clock, that's when we feed them. Uh, once we feed them, then around 12 o'clock again, it's time for milking again, because I milk about three times a day. Around 12 o'clock again milking. In the afternoon, we normally now, in the afternoon we normally prepare the feeds for tomorrow. In the morning, the, the feeds that we are feeding them in, in the morning, we normally now prepare it in the afternoon. And then now from uh, around 5 o'clock again, we also milk. And uh, basically that is it. After milking, now it's just supplying because the customers normally come for the milk here. Others will supply them in the estate. Feeds takes up the biggest chunk of the cost of production in dairy farming. For optimal milk production, dairy cows should be fed with a total mixed ration which must contain good quality forages, a balance of grain and protein sources, vitamins and minerals. Wakio has developed a system that he tries to counter their cost by making his own dairy meal. Well, once we do the cleaning, eh? what we do, we use that manure to grow some napier grass and some maize. And that is the same napier grass we used to feed the, the cows. Also, although we, we also give some supplements, we, we, which we normally buy from the, from the shop. Some of it I get from Uganda. And uh, when they come, because Uganda, it's, uh, they, are, they are normally available. They are readily available in Uganda. So when they come, especially the maize jam, I get it from Uganda. So when they come, I normally now mix it with the uh, supplements. Supplements, we normally have cotton, sunflower, soya, and uh, fish meal. So we mix it with the maize jam and also bran and poland. And we make, it, it, it's cheaper that way. So we are able to make uh, our own kind of uh, dairy meal through that mixing. You get different raw materials and then you mix them yourself. Wakio elaborates further why he opts to buy the raw materials for his dairy meal all the way in Uganda. The, the supplements are normally very cheap there. And the maize jam, especially for Uganda, it's whole meal. Even if you look at it, utapata ikona mahindi. You know, it's, it's, which means it's uh, the content is quite is, is quite heavy. It's nutritious. Yeah. And if you give it, you'll see a, a very big difference between the one for here. In fact, those are the uh, some of the mathematics. The mathematics that I did for going to Uganda, I normally used to get my feeds from uh, Pika. There's a uh, there's a place they also do those things, they mix those things, they, it's called county, county style in Thika. And they were, they were getting it from Uganda. And uh, when I looked at uh, the dairy meal that I'm buying from, from the shops around, I am buying it at uh, around 2,000, one sack of dairy meal. When I went to Thika, I could be able to buy that sack from county style, they are called county style. I could be able to buy that sack at uh, 16.50 per kg, which means when you multiply by 70, it comes to about 1,500. That time you are saving about 500 shillings, uh, 500 shillings per, per, per bag. That time you have gone to Dika. Call it even 400 shillings because of the cost and whatever. And if you find that now you, you go maybe once a month, you get about, you go with a pickup, you get about uh, 20 bags. 20 times 500 is about, is it 10,000? Yeah. It's about 10,000. Then I thought these guys are getting these things from Uganda and I'm going to get them to, from, I'm going to get it from them now from Thika. And I thought, why don't I do some research uh, in Uganda? And I went and I met some millers and uh, there you are now able to get it at a much cheaper price if you bring it in large quantity, like uh, you bring it to a trailer or a lorry. You'll find that now that you make an extra saving because him is also making some money getting it from uh, Uganda to Thika and I thought why don't I go to Uganda myself and I went and you find now you're making uh, per bag the way I'm buying it here 
you are making a, a saving of about 700 uh, 800 when you do do it you get it you get it yourself from from uh, from uh, Uganda then you come you also get the supplements from there once you get the supplements you mix it up because the mixing is you just get the formula from some of these the people who are who are also making it and from the vets you mix it and you find uh, this cost of uh, 2000 the one you buy from directly from the shop you are actually saving about 6 700 shillings per bag about 700 shillings